All I can do is hear. That's what I can do. I hear the people around me. I hear the way they feel. I hear the things that they don't say. I hear mm. the connections that they're not willing to tell me they have. Like I can hear all of these things and feel them and know that they exist for that person's reality. Mm. And I'm not going to say anything against that. Why would I? Mm. That is how they have survived. Mm. Matter of fact, I want to help them learn to use it to create their abundance, to create their life mm -hmm. and their happiness, because that's not something that's talked about yet. I want to welcome back Kathy Miller. Thank you so much. I always love interacting with you. I have a feeling our brains may operate similarly because sometimes when you're speaking, I'm like picking up all kinds of information and it's like mm -hmm. this huge download. So I'm really happy that I'm getting you before your busy tax season. Oh on the subject of neurodiversity talk a little bit about your your self-awareness journey like when did you start to discuss when did you become educated about um your own unique neurodiversity and what impact has that made on your life well, I've always known I was different, obviously. Like, that's always been a glaring um, thing. I just thought I was really bad at being human. Like, I just didn't know how it worked. Um, and my middle child was diagnosed five years ago with autism and some pretty, like, developmental dislay delays and some other stuff right and I I kind of just sat with that information and just like my jaw was on the floor with the level of stuff that they were talking about that you know for help and that kind of thing and I was like you you mean there's help <laughs> like <laughs> wait wait what are you hold on so I just spent like a year just trying to get to know my kid, trying to understand what their brain was like, how it interacted with their world and where we were falling because he's ADHD. So he, I've known ADHD since like three years old. You cannot mistake that stuff, man. Whoa. Um, but he's ADHD, which means his autism and his ADHD fight. Oh. And that's what we all have. Goodness. And I didn't, hmm, I knew, but I didn't know. Like there wasn't enough information in my world to really be able to touch what was going on. Mm. And so as I got in, to know what it meant to be ADHD and autistic, so I could understand my child, I inadvertently started to understand about myself. Mm. And I was like, oh, wait no i do that that's why this is normal oh no i do that too that's totally normal and then i start looking back in my family and all my relatives and i started talking to my cousins and they were like oh wait excuse me that's that's not the way life works mm. okay okay hold on let's back the train up and like really sit with this and so the first couple of years all i could do was sit with it that's all i could do i could just sit with it and be like everything i knew everything i thought i knew about me is not correct that it's not the way it is like mm. i was tearing myself apart mm. because i don't keep jobs for longer than a couple of years i'm always moving on to the new thing excuse me, the new thing, the new um, 
uh, challenge. There's the word, the new challenge. I'm always like looking for that next availability to learn something. And mm. I love learning. Mm. And that is what gets me up. Mm -hmm. I, I will I will get out of bed at any time of the morning if it means I get to learn something new. Mm -hmm. And um, that was really kind of the the thing that helped me learn about me. Mm -hmm. Like I get to learn something new about this entire neurodivergence that I didn't even know existed. Mm -hmm. And as I there's a book called Unmasking Autism by uh, um, price and he was he's a it was amazing the the intro to that book was like listening to my struggles in my life mm. like he talks about not like I, obviously I don't need friends because friends are hard and they don't like mm. they're always telling me I'm doing stuff wrong and mm. all of these other things. So like mm, maybe I don't do the friend thing, right? Mm. Um, but without friends, autistics go crazy. Like mm. baseline, it's bad. We mm. we need that because mm. we process on a completely different level mm. and whether we're verbal processors or we write it out it doesn't matter we need the feedback that other people give us mm. to how they think because we don't want to just incorporate neurotypical neurodivergence we want to incorporate everybody if the weakest neurodivergent person has access to knowledge and food and shelter and all of the things then that means everybody has access mm. and that means we are stronger as a people mm. and it just blows my mind that this hasn't been a conversation until now that entire groups of us are made to feel so lost and so broken mm. when really we just have a different connection to the world around us like we were the, um, it is believed that we were the shamans and the holy people of different tribes and, you know, ways of life that were subsequently gotten rid of when we wanted to make life all mere one, mm -hmm. one human, yeah. right? Yeah. And now we're being born into it. Like we're being born into that life of one human and we're still not like, I don't care what skin color we are. I don't care what religion we come from, what background we are in all walks of life. So it has nothing to do with culture and everything to do with being human. Mm. Mm. And that's, kind of an opinion <laughs> yeah well i mean there's sociological studies that probably back that up you know we are tribal by nature mm -hmm. you know but it, it's true uh we are witnessing um an awakening mm -hmm. which is getting kind of ugly and uglier it seems like on the front out there um because the whole you know patriarchal person on top mm -hmm. fighting to get to the top only a few people are on top and then there's all right. the mass of us over here and i i have a feeling that a lot of the you know neuro um divergent brilliance is in this area of yep. <laughs> the um pyramid so I, I really like the um, Martha Beck um, did uh, the pool and the pyramid. Um, it's a, a YouTube and I saw that in 2020 and I, I still draw on that YouTube um, video because she does such a good um, job, not only speaking from a, a platform of hope, you know, mm -hmm. which I think we need to keep that conversation alive as world events are just 
seems like they're escalating in a really bad way. Um, but that, uh, you know, when we, those of us on the bottom of that pyramid, you know, these, these are the guys that want war, right? And most of us don't. And when we pool together our, um, and we come together as a one moving unit, you know, it's just going to melt that whole, when we stop trying to get to the top. That's it. That's it. Exactly. And we embrace each it. other in, mm -hmm. in that love. That's what's going to melt down that, that thing. So we're kind mm -hmm. of in the, we're in the process of that. And I feel like yep. these conversations are an important part of that coming together, self-awareness, awareness about others, becoming educated that there is a spectrum on how we perceive ourselves and how we present ourselves to the world and how we process our brains processing. I think the more that we have the capacity to um, be curious and not assume, mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. because one person has a certain plumbing, you know, that, that, that they fit into this limited box. Right. You know, but um, that we can open up our own minds about who we are individually, but also how to receive other people. I think that is um, really coming together in that force of love, you know, the acceptance mm -hmm. um, of our diversities. So when I was younger, I always knew um, that I'd be a part of the change. I didn't know what the change was. I didn't know how, I didn't, nothing. Um, I always thought it was war because I grew up military, right? That's that's what I was trained in. I was trained in war and how to be, you know, that person. And it's funny because I, I never, I wasn't really good at it because I was always horrible at being a, a human. So other people, when they tell me, oh, I messed up and here's why, I go, okay, yeah, uh-huh, I completely get that. Unfortunately, because of that, you have to watch out for, you know, the people that will abuse the things and do the things. And that the training of Fitting in the box is how I got abused the most. Mm. When I stopped being that person and I stopped being a part of this patriarchal, you do this and this is how you do it, they didn't want to have anything to do with me. Mm. When I looked at them and said, no, just no. I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to be that person. I don't, I can't keep doing this. They, they, okay, move on, right? But as autistics, as neurodivergence, we don't realize it's that simple because we're trained that we are the people pleasers. We are the people that are always so difficult to live with that we have to. We have to fit in the box because they'd never live with us any other way. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to my therapist the other day and it, it like that thought process just kind of came full circle. And I realized that I literally thought I was impossible to live with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely impossible that my quirks and my needs were so high and such a demand that we'd never, I'd never find anybody. I got multiple people. I had to kick people out of my house recently. Like, okay, guys, we can't keep doing this. I love mm. you. Please move on, mm. you know? Mm. And it never occurred to me. I thought I was a mean person. It never occurred to me that that's what people told me in order to use me. Mm like neurodivergent people are the most forgiving the most brilliant people i've ever had the pleasure to work with and the biggest thing that makes them 
who they are is that a lot of them just, they get it. They get not being perfect. Matter of fact, they get it so much that you could do the dumbest things and they will look at you and be like, yeah, no, I did that on Thursday. You're great. <laughs> not a big deal. And, uh, and that's really good because in person, I'm kind of a disaster. Like mm. I wear most of my food. I know how to use <laughs> all the right perks. But if you give me a water bottle, I'm going to pour it down the front of me <laughs> while drinking. Like, these are things. This is life for me. Yeah. You know? So the awareness that we have been trained to not like ourselves, to hate ourselves so that they can keep control mm. blew my mind. Wow. Just blew it. Yeah, because guess what? What if it's uh, the neurodivergent pool of people who actually have the leadership and ability to liberate the masses? And that would be why we've been killed so many generations in a row. Yeah. Because that's, that's what we do. We liberate our minds as we grow older, as we go, that's not, that's not there's nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with me. I am yeah. a human being. And this is how I was created. And if you truly believed in the stuff that is preached to us, then we should be just as celebrated as everybody else. I love that. So any final words on where are you at with relationship to spirit i like to know like does the word god hit you weird do you, are you a secret god lover or where are you at in that particular spectrum because where you're at is going to speak to someone out there it is it is right so i am triggered by the word god often i've gotten so much better than i used to be it used to be an automatic shutdown yeah. um I've had God used to abuse and beat me and I will never be there again. Um, all the way through my adult years, if it wasn't my kids used against me, it was religion. Um, and so now I've had to come to terms that not everybody's gonna experience the same stuff I was. But I'm a big advocate against a lot of like the cult church and that kind of stuff because my family is still very much mm. entwined with all of mm -hmm. that. Um, I connect with universe, higher self. Um, I love the broad understanding that I get when I connect up to the human consciousness. Um, because like, for example, the other day I was doing a, a little crossword search and I read a question and I had no idea what it was. I read it out loud, nobody else knew what it was. I went through like 40 other questions, come back to the question and somebody in the back goes, oh, it's this. And I went, seriously, it is? Sure enough, it is. Because that's what it's like to connect with the human consciousness. Like, you don't have to know all the answers. You just got to be able to hear them. Mm. Like, you just got to be present for it. And they'll answer your questions. They'll tell you who to talk to to get to the next stage. Mm. Like, we're all up there. We're all a part of it. Mm. You just got to quiet the ego long enough to hear it and realize that you don't have to have the answers mm. and that's why it's lovely to be neurodivergent because I don't have them to start with all I can do is hear that's what I can do I hear the people around me I hear the way they feel I hear the things that they don't say I hear mm. the connections that they're not willing to tell me they have like I can hear all of these things and feel them and know that they exist for that person's reality. Mm. And I'm not going to say anything against that. Why would I? 
Mm. That is how they have survived. Mm. Matter of fact, I want to help them learn to use it to create their abundance, to create mm. their life mm. and their happiness, because that's not something that's talked about yet. You know, like well, we're talking can... about it here. We're going to get it out there. <laughs> right if you can hear the guides like dude you're halfway there like let's go yeah. let's do it yeah let's find out the real message i really love that thank you again for for meeting with me